All right, fellow Patreons, we're back on the Jetta Mark IV VR6, and we're getting ready to pull the subframe today. So we're gonna walk you through the entire process of pulling the subframe. We already got in the car up in the air, so you'll see. And the reason why we got it all up in the air is to, number one, today's DIY is pulling the subframe, pulling the spindle, the front suspension completely out off the car. Then the next DIY, we're gonna pull the rear beam completely out because we're gonna rebuild the whole back end and we're rebuilding the whole front end. We're gonna actually gonna rebuild the subframe, control arms, all that is gonna be taken care of. We're gonna refresh all of that. Same with the rear, we got new rear beam bushings. Um, we're gonna refresh it with new brakes, new uh, brake pads. Same with the front. We're actually gonna go bigger brakes on the front. We're gonna go to uh, Porsche boxer brakes on the front um, for an upgrade. And then we're gonna make a decision on what's next after that. Cause once that's all done, we gotta shave the engine bay and then do some body work. So let's get to work. This is Pinchy Al's Garage. actually cleaning this uh, my uh, workspace up so I'll be right back so our next step here is to remove pretty much the front suspension um, we're gonna have to figure out where to keep the caliper out of the way so we need a safe spot so the caliper can be mounted um, so we don't uh, pull on the brake lines and damage those we are gonna be replacing them but we don't want to damage them and then just cause a really bad leak so we need to figure out a good spot because all of this is going to be coming out, all of it. So we want to make sure that, again, we don't cause any type of damage. So first thing is first is that we're going to figure out how to, we're going to remove the caliper first. Once the caliper is removed, figure out a good mounting spot. And I don't see one. Um, hmm. Let's see. We're probably going to have to take the coilover out. Once we take the strut out, um, I think we just probably put something on top of here so it hangs and just holds it from there. <sighs> yeah, that probably makes the most sense. I think we're going to have to go that route. That sucks, but yeah, I think that's the route we're going to have to go. Oh, 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 maybe here. This, yeah, we'll get a zip tie and just, no, no, pull strain on that. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's the smartest thing we can do is... Get something on top of here, put like a string down, and that way I'll hold it and hang from the top of that. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so got the control arm out, out. And again, guys, just so you guys know, the control arm is held together by two 18 millimeter bolts. This one on the back, you have to use an 18 millimeter wrench on top and use that. Uh, I would highly recommend, make sure you have a really long breaker bar to break that one loose. That one tends to have the most uh, force because uh, they tend to rust a little bit more than the others. So currently I am actually holding the caliper on the tie rod end and that's actually uh, been pretty good. So I'm probably going to zip tie it to that. I think that's going to be the smartest spot to put it right now. Even if it falls or turns over, if I zip tie it in place, it'll probably just stay there, which is probably just fine for right now until we get everything else taken care of. Um, so those two again are held together by two 18s and an 18 millimeter nut on the very top um, at the front of the control arm for your spindle. You guys can see here your tie rod end that bolts on here uses a 19 millimeter socket and then your ball joint are all there's three 13 millimeters. So again all we're doing is unbolting right now. The proper DIY the proper portion of the DIY is actually getting it all clean prepped and ready for reassembly. So we're just showing you what we've done to remove everything. Um, the next hard part is again the next control arm is removing the actual uh, subframe which is going to be the hardest part out of this whole entire DIY. 
So we'll show you guys what to do next. All right, now that we got both spindles and control arm out of the way, we're gonna get ready to drop the subframe. Now this is where it comes tricky because there's some stuff that you have to be careful with. If not, it's gonna like hang all weird and whatnot. So um, you need to find some rope. I know that's weird, but yes, you need rope. And what's gonna happen is that we're gonna need rope to wrap around the uh, the rack and pinion here. Um, and the reason why we need to do that because we're gonna drop the subframe and that's gonna hang. And we don't wanna cause any damage or strain here on the steering rack neck. So to prevent any damage or have any future issues, grab some rope and tie it around after you unbolt it because if not, you're not gonna be able to fit it underneath there. And you're just gonna wrap it around a couple times and figure out where we're gonna mount it above. Usually I just have like a metal bar that goes across and just hangs on top of that. So we have to figure something out. Um, oh, I know what I could use. Be right back. It'll work for the time being, but we're gonna just janky the uh, strut brace that we have here. Uh, and then we'll just use that to, uh, to tie some rope around it to hold the rack and pinion up. Again, it's just a safety precaution just so you don't damage stuff down the road, so you don't end up buying the stuff again. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So underneath the rack and pinion is held together by four 10 millimeter bolts. Or 13, I think. 10 or 13, let me double check. But it's these right here. One, two, three, and four. These four have to be removed first. After we remove those four, then these these big beefy ones right here. See these? There's four. One, two, three, and the same spot, number four, somewhere over here. Um, all those have to be removed, and then the subframe just drops. But in doing so, again, just be careful on the rack and pinion. That's all I ask. Once that drops, your um, your calipers here that we have chilling on the um, tie rod ends should be zip tied. Oh, excuse me, so they don't damage and drop. Because right now the brake line is actually not ha doesn't have any tension at all, so it's a good thing. So just remember that guys, um, just for future, you don't want this to drop and um, pull this line too hard because then you're going to end up damaging it. Um, that's it, so let's show you, let's get to work. So I found some ratcheting straps and actually I figured out I can ratchet the, uh, or strap the, <laughs> ratchet the rack and pinion to the corner here in the hood and then right here for the hood prop. So that worked out. Um, so now uh, the four bolts underneath are, again, they're 13 millimeter four bolts. And now it's the uh, last four for the actual subframe. And then the whole frame is going to drop. Uh, I recommend that you get a jack, put it in the middle of the subframe, and just put a little bit of tension on it. So when it drops, it drops slowly versus it just slamming on you. It makes it also easier uh, to do that to... Um, to lower it as well and to easier to unbolt everything so the four uh, bolts that hold the uh, subframe are removed uh, they are 21 millimeters so that's good so now next step is to drop it so we go here and just again it's super slow the ratchets the strap should do their job And it should just go all the way down to the ground. And you'll see, subframe is now removed. Um, the next step is to remove the sway bar because we got a new sway bar coming in. Um, but you'll notice the rack and pinion is in place and not moving. That's what we needed to happen so we didn't damage it at all or cause any type of damage, which is a super good thing because, again, I don't want to pay more money on something that I don't need to buy, spend money on, you know? Rack and pinion works, it works. Oof, sorry about that. So now, we got this, and next step is to remove the sway bar. It's two 13 millimeters, and then we're going to degrease this guy and get it ready for 
uh, new bushings and a coat of paint. So let's go, let's get to work. All right, so we didn't get to the part where we painted it and degreased it. Uh, we did do that pretty much right after that, but I didn't film it. Uh, I was having issues with my power washer during that video. Uh, so I couldn't actually film it because it ended up getting really, really dark um, to do that. So we ended up power washing it and degreasing it. So it came out really good. And then right after that, we did that live segment. If you guys saw that, if you guys uh, tuned in on that, guys, um, it was just a full live segment of us removing the control arm bushings, installing new bushings on the control arms, removing the uh, subframe bushings, the two that sit on the back. Uh, again, it was a very long process, and then we removed them all, and reinstalled brand new polyurethane bushings on the control arm, and brand new rubber bushings on the subframe. Uh, we did. I did consider doing um, solid ones on the subframe, but uh, for the type of build that we're going for, for uh, I believe we're going to be okay with that style uh, since we are going to be reinforcing all the moving bushings uh, with all polyurethane. So I think the car is going to be pretty dang solid after we're done with it, especially doing an upgraded front sway bar and an upgraded rear sway bar. This car is going to be really solid. Um, definitely considering doing a rear uh, strut brace and a front strut brace as well for this car just for a little bit added stiffness. Um, so again, thank you for tuning in. You guys are awesome. All you Patreon members have been extremely awesome and very helpful. And my favorite thing is you guys are actually willing to be participate in the videos. So enjoy this DIY by all means. And again, happy wrenching. And as always here at Pinchao's Garage, we're going to break, we're going to fix, and we're going to repeat. Peace out everyone and have a wonderful day.